Okay, I've had a lot of requests for this one. We're going to make some beef stock, or if you must, you can call it bone broth. Uh, really, what's the difference? Uh, not much, though uh, it depends on who you discuss it with. Uh, bone broth can be longer cooked. Uh, there's the addition of the apple cider vinegar with bone broth. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna make some beef stock. Tell you how you can turn it into bone broth if you want. But what this is, is my pressure cooker. And you can see the line on the side there. I'm gonna fill the water up to that first line. And we've got some bones in here that uh, I've used uh, previously uh, to, uh, they're not used previously, they, they were cooked previously, uh, roasted with the meat on the bone. And then uh, I froze them for a while uh, to store them up so that I would have enough for the beef stock. All right, so what else goes in the pot with the bones and the water? Well, we've got uh, your standard onions, celery, and carrots here. Uh, rough chop. Uh, these are just going to be boiled in there with the uh, with the bones, so you don't have to do anything fancy to it. Rough chop. You'll notice I don't even peel my carrots. I just scrub them well. Uh, yeah, of course, wash your vegetables always. I've uh, got some parsley here, and then I'm also going to use some bay leaves and some peppercorns, and then that'll all go in the pot. All in the pot, over high heat. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. When it boils, I will pop the uh, pressure cooker lid on. I almost forgot an ingredient, because uh, I often make chicken stock, I don't always make beef stock. And with beef stock, uh, with, with hardier stock like that, I usually like to use some tomato paste, about two tablespoons worth. Okay, so we've just come to a boil. I'm gonna pop the, uh, let's put down my phone for this, hold on. I'm gonna pop the pressure cooker lid on. Make sure pressure is engaged. See that it comes up to pressure there. Should come relatively quickly because I already brought it to a boil. Yep, you can see it's come up to pressure. And then I'm gonna drop the heat to as low as I can go while maintaining a pressure. Usually on my stove, two to three will do the job. Now, I'm gonna let this cook under pressure for two and a half hours. Now, if I were making bone broth instead of just stock, as I'm doing, I might let this go for four to six hours. The whole point, though, is to cook it the lowest temp as possible while under pressure. All right, the timer has ended. Two and a half hours under pressure. I'm gonna turn the heat off. We had it really low, which is great. And now, I'm gonna turn that timer off. Now we're gonna let it naturally release. We're not going to uh, jiggle this thing and release all the steam. We're gonna let it naturally release. Like I said, this was two and a half hours. If you wanted to make bone broth, go for four to six hours. But I'm very happy with the stock that I have here. I think it's gonna be perfect, very flavorful, exactly what I want. Okay, as you can see, the uh, little plunger there went down. So I'm gonna release this. See, no more steam, nothing. And now I'm gonna move this over to uh, drain it, strain it out. Now, if you have an Instant Pot, which is an electric pressure cooker, same principle as the pressure cooker on the stove top. Put all the bones in, all your vegetables, spices and everything, lock the top on and set it up for two and a half hours or longer if you'd like to turn it into bone broth. So same as with the stove top pressure cooker, you wanna make sure your vent is closed and once you see this pop up, you know that you're under pressure and we'll let this cook for a while. Okay, this is a little difficult to do by myself and I'll try it. What I have here is I have a bowl with ice, a bowl inside that, so it's chilling this down. And uh, I'm gonna pour the contents of the pressure cooker into this strainer by myself without making a mess. We'll see if that happens or not. I'm gonna double strain this so it's not perfectly important if I get it exactly right the first time. But as you can see, some beautiful beef stock. It's got that orangey color from the uh, tomato paste. Uh, you know, most of our bones are there. I'm gonna do a little more straining work and uh, make sure this is clear and then I'll strain it into a, uh, a container after I add some uh, ice packs to cool this down. Okay, so I'm straining it a second time and through a layer of cheesecloth this time. 
And as you can see, it's almost completely gone through. I'll just let that sit for a bit and uh, it'll be done. And here it is, the final product, luscious beef stock or bone broth. Like I was saying, if you wanted to make this into bone broth, you would just cook it for longer. And then you, have, you make the addition of some apple cider vinegar. Uh, really it's a, you know, few tablespoons is, is what's recommended, but you can make it a delicious bone broth for drinking or beef stock for making into soups, stews, sauces, and all sorts of other things. Thank you.